right now what I'm doing is creating a kind of Trojan file, Android.apk file. This is the APK file that will be distributed all over the internet. And the person whosoever is downloading this APK file, his mobile phone will be hacked easily. They are always binded with some kind of other games like Candy Crush, Mini Militia, Clash of Clans. You may never know that that particular file can contain a backdoor inside that. And just see what will happen. I need to hack Android, so Android will be load 192.168.0.102. So you are installing the file that I have created. So it is Android 6.0.1. Okay, I can take uh, photos from your camera without your knowledge. Webcam underscore list. No light was there, no sound was there. So it is a kind of a spy cam. Okay. Snap underscore two. So this is you over here. Call logs. I'm dumping the call logs over here. You farzine. Incoming call was there. So you can see I'm accessing everything that is inside your mobile phone. There is an option of record underscore mic. So this mic can automatically be hacked by the attacker and he can listen to what I am speaking in the background. 2119 SMSs in this phone. And that SMS may contain what? OTPs of your bank accounts or Gmail account or any account. You can see here is the SMS dump. So you got an incoming SMS, driver name Sunil, mobile number this. It was cab. Your bank account number, okay, the last digit is 4663261. So these are all your details that can be taken out from your mobile phone. What about this internet thing? Do you, do you know anything about that? It is the big new thing. The internet is growing like an embryonic brain at a rate of 10% a month. By the end of the 90s, many of us were happy slaves to our computers. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. This morning, the FBI is investigating the photo hacking that targeted Hollywood celebrities. iCloud came under instant scrutiny. And now there's a new form of cyber matchmaking, college networking websites, thefacebook.com. There are more internet users in India than the United States. States. Close to 30 lakh debit cards are understood that are suspected to have exposed card and PIN details to malware at the back end. Everything's in the internet, everything's in computers, and we're going to lose it all. People were terrified the world was going to end. The entire government system and corporate system is really under threat and underprepared for this kind of cyber crime, Pauline. Yes, your computer is at risk because at least 150 countries, scores of multinational companies and more than and two lakh people have fallen prey to this massive cyber attack dubbed as WannaCry ransomware. It is something like a kind of crypto locker. It will not harm your computer, but it will encrypt each and every data inside your computer. And if it is encrypted, it will ask for a decryption password. And to decrypt, you will need a key. And that key will be generated only when you will pay a particular amount of money into a Bitcoin address. Okay, Bitcoin is a kind of virtual money. So that is why it's called as ransomware. In Darknet, one guy was there, he was providing ransomware for free. So at that time, I registered myself over there and I purchased uh, the code through which I can make the ransomware. Near about when I was in 12th class, I started hacking. I bypassed the firewall of our school so that we can open anything inside our school internet connection. I have made phishing pages for many websites. Phishing means a kind of duplicate page that asks for the login and all different things. For each and everything I used to get money and the charges varied from 10,000 to 1 lakh. It was never intended to go inside black hat hacking. I was just interested in hacking. Since there was no, uh, you can say, exposure, that's why I was doing black hat hacking, just for my pocket money and that's all. The more and more things that you will connect to the internet, you the, the more will be the vulnerability over there. So if you are connected to the internet 24-7, that means you are under attack 24-7. Because for hackers, they just need a medium to attack. And internet is the best medium to attack someone. Assume everything you do on the internet is already hacked. Assume every email that you write, assume every picture that you click from your phone is already something that is visible to the public eye and is something that anybody and everybody can read. 
There are only two kinds of people in the world. One who know that they have been hacked and the others who do not know that they have been hacked. Today in our world, absolute security is virtually non-existent. What was secure yesterday is not secure today. What is secure today will definitely not be secure tomorrow. Every stakeholder is today increasingly using data and information in the electronic form. There is no denying the fact that uh, earlier we used to be connected to the internet. Today we are the part of the internet. So consequently internet is taken for granted. With the result there is blurring of the lines between the physical world and the virtual world. And the machines are becoming more and more smarter because of the data that we are providing when it comes to our personal and professional lives to the internet. 24 months back, the total number of smartphones in India were as low as 15 million, 15. Right now, we've crossed 250 million smartphones. You're saying one out of every five individuals in India are carrying a smartphone. Now, what does a smartphone mean? It's a way in which you can go ahead and embed a lot of data, starting from our check-ins till, till, till allowing apps to monitor our location 24 seven on our phones, till clicking pictures of ourselves with and without clothes or your emails that, that really come and go through it or your browsing history it can speak volumes about you. It's the great Indian vomiting revolution where Indians are vomiting information about their personal, professional, social life on the internet. So when you talk about all of this, data entry points are only expanding as we move further. There was a very interesting study which said over 40% of the people on the planet use two passwords maximum for almost all of their accounts which they have. And if you get an access to one of the passwords or two of the passwords, you potentially have an access to all the accounts that a person is really is really accessing. So it's relatively becoming easier to hack. Again, not just because there's so much data, there's also availability of hacking tools on the internet in a very, very easy manner. For a hacker, it's a hacker's paradise already. Few years back, there was not a single person, not a single company over here in, the, in India who is demanding for hackers. But nowadays, the demand of hackers are increasing. Why? IoT is coming everywhere, Internet of Things and all. Internet of Things is basically the idea that all the gadgets that you have, including uh, your washing machine, your uh, smart TV, for example, your, um, your satellite uh, receiver, all these things uh, nowadays are capable of running software. So now, why not make a network of these things? So that from one, uh, you can control the other, and also they can cooperate with each other. So for example, if a phone rings, your TV volume might automatically reduce because they are talking to each other. You might, uh, for, from your phone, want to turn on your AC before, you know, 15 minutes before you reach home. So these are the things that people are thinking in terms of use cases. The problem with this is that uh, by uh, creating this uh, you know, connection and connectivity, vulnerability in one can propagate to uh, other devices. And therefore, you know, it can take over your entire system. IoTs are generally hacked by using MITM attacks only. You also will not come to know that you're, you are being inspired by your own TV. Leaked documents about the CIA's technical capability to carry out hacking into electronic devices, things like um, Android phones, iPhones, even in one interesting document, Samsung smart TVs, so it can make the, it look like the TV is off when in fact it's on and actually collecting audio from the room and sending it back. And your TV is just a single point inside the complete network, a single node, okay, there can be 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs, there can be many TVs, televisions all over the world. So what they can do, they can be used to attack onto a particular target. That is called DDoS, okay, distributed denial of service attack. The new tactic was carried out by hackers using a virus to take control of millions of personal devices connected to the internet, like home routers, DVRs, baby monitors, and security cameras without their owner's knowledge. This is happening every day. And if you look at the crime statistics in India, cyber crime statistics, and these are reported crimes, so a lot of things don't uh, get reported. In 2011, it was about 14,000. And in 2015, it was about 3 lakhs. There is nothing called 100% certain of something cannot be hacked. We've seen the DNC, we've seen the, the, the Pentagon, we've seen CIA just two weeks back. We've seen the largest of the organizations like the Sonys, the Nasdaqs, they've all been hacked 
and not once but multiple times in a very very bad way. I think on the 26th is my father's birthday so we went out, bought a couple of things with my debit card and by the time we came back I saw two transactions that happened from my debit card. In technology there are mainly three possibilities of attacks you can do in majority. One is your web application attacks, second is your mobile application attacks and third is your network attacks. Now they are organized criminal gangs who are more interested in to generate money out of those hacks. So I quickly alerted my father and we kind of hotlisted the debit card, wanted to get a refund, so initiated the process with the bank for which they wanted a police complaint. The new debit card came in about a week and I think I used it just two, three places again uh, when I had another transaction that happened on the second debit card. I think it was an Indonesian tr transaction for about, for the amount of like one lakh. And so the bank called me to ask if I made that transaction. So I had to hotlist the second debit card, get the third debit card. So I was pretty sure the first one is cloned uh, just because of the nature of um, scam. It's kind of like, the elaborate schemes of scamming people with mind play. So they would come around and they would say, oh, it's demonetization, right? Why would you use cash? Everyone should use their cards. So I think after I used my card, they probably got, went in there and they cloned it. You go to a website and you can actually be redirected to a similar looking website, your banking website. You type in your password and, and, and all that. And then you basically are not really typing to your bank, but you're typing it to uh, the hacker's uh, server. If I open phishing page of Facebook, here you can see, what is this? The real Facebook page, it looks totally similar. I will give my original username and original password right now over here. Now just, if I'll close this thing, this is my username. After that, this is my password. So if I host this particular page onto a server and I send it to the victim through email or anything like that, he will get the login over there. He will think that everything was fine, but it is not actually fine. Your username and password is already stolen right now. Everybody is having an online banking account, but at the time of login, when you give a username and the password, just, before the, just beside the password box, there is an option of virtual keyboard, means on-screen keyboard. But 99.99% people, they do not use it. They use just their physical keyboard. That's the mistake that we make use of and we get the keystrokes. That is called key logging. Eventually they told me it would be best if you kind of keep your debit cards not on any online platform. So get them off Paytm, Uber, Amazon. Uh, for the second one, on the other hand, I have no idea like how how did a card that was used just on two apps, five days old, get hacked so quickly? So that kind of put a spanner in the works in my thinking. My first first um, feeling, gut feeling was someone's in my phone. If you're using a Wi-Fi which is in a public domain, then someone can do a man in the middle attack. Your username and password is transferred from your laptop to the router and from router to the server and then it is get authenticated and you get the connection back to you. Just imagine in place of router if an attacker is sitting over there. Whatever the things you are going to surf, whatever the images you are seeing, whatever the website you are visiting and as you put the password then he will see each and everything. This mobile is connected to our Wi-Fi and this laptop is also connected to the same Wi-Fi which is there. The router thinks that this laptop is a mobile phone and this mobile phone thinks that this laptop is a router. And I type scoopwoop.com, right? So you can see something is happening here. You can put it here so that you can compare with it. And you can see here scoopwoop.com. So I know that which website you're right trying trying to open in your phone. Do you have Instagram now? Yeah whatever the pictures I'm surfing right now, as you can see, so if I'm surfing the Instagram, and it's not a website, it's an application. So this way we can intercept all the photos, or whatever you are surfing, along with the URL, or video you are watching. You go to public places, there are public chargers over there. Uh, you might be knowing that USB cables are used for two things, for data transfer and for charging. It's very easy to make 
a charger that can easily copy your data from your mobile phones somebody asks you to give your phone uh, for an emergency call on the on the bus stop or some place and then in 30 seconds he can actually download an uh, apk file and then you can get compromised any one of you would like to give me the phone okay. thanks you can check your phone sir if you can find anything new inside so that thing is okay oh that's good anything mi4i do you know your ima number sir no okay you can note it down from here <laughs> outgoing call 198198 hope it's customer care you called if i have access to sms i have an access to your backbone of internet i'll go to your gmail i'll go for reset my password he will see the sms and can reset your gmail you can go to his if your facebook which is already connected to the gmail and then can reset the password of facebook you are using net banking i'll go to your online banking and i'll go to online banking and get the otp and transfer money wherever i want i hope you don't mind if i can show the contact also sure. so his contact list is having almost 698 contacts oh my god that's a huge number you know and then we have a browser history also then we have a gps where he is exactly i'm talking about and there is a good thing known as audio recording every time i need to connect to you there is a syncing happen into your phone so the data is there and other things are there so it will get the microphone get the data back to our server and then we can see what the person is talking yeah we we'll got it every time i need to connect to you there is a syncing happen into your phone so you can listen here right now the all the conversation we was doing we just recorded and it is just at this time we recorded the audio if you can if you observe it is 10 seconds your entire life of a person is in the wrong hands and he can do whatever he wants so these are the small data content which are there which which is basically a, this is kind of a metadata metadata together becomes a content and content tells a story about a person we cannot hack anyone until and unless you will give me the permission to hack yourself that is the main thing that is called social engineering the maximum hacks have happened because people were asked to click on certain links and then certain technical controls were exploited on their system using which people either pivoted to other servers and systems or extracted their own system so what they do is if you're an e-commerce website they will try to hack into your website nobody will know that it is breach your customer is going they want that more customer will come to your website and they do more purchases and on the other hand side in the background and they try to steal the critical information like your credit card details debit card details so right now you can see over here the username of internet banking the password of internet banking the name the address home phone number mobile phone number i was not able to capture email id email password is also given over here account number card number expiry date cvv number atm pin ssn number date of birth and security questions along with answers so if you are having these much details along with you you can do any kind of online fraud by using this card and not only this this card is there with me there are more than 300 cards with me right now i think the bank was doing whatever whatever technology they have but i think beyond that they have no way they have no way of cracking if the two cases are connected right they have no way of telling if my uh, debit card is being compromised on a paytm so i think they're not technically capable to fix a problem they are probably they are technically capable to i think just find data and maybe hope that it kind of shows a pattern i think india as a nation doesn't have a plan in place for dealing with cyber crime when we enacted uh, the information technology act it was a kind of a jack of all trades law so we put in a chapter to deal with cyber crimes the 2000 legislation was effective because it had made a number of cyber crimes as non available offenses but in 2008 when india amended its cyber law it made a historical mistake it made barring a few cyber crimes almost all cyber crimes as available offenses but that was 2008 today in 2017 you quickly realize that the indian it act is thoroughly outdated India does not have dedicated laws to deal with digital payments. India also does not have a law on cyber security or a dedicated legislation on privacy and data protection. 
So in a scenario like this, where increasingly Indians want to come on to the digital bandwagon, it's imperative that legal frameworks must not only provide for appropriate consumer protection, but also provide for the cyber security of the entire ecosystem and its constituents. In a country where uh, under-reporting of cybercrime is a de facto norm, this is only adding further trouble for the challenges that the law enforcement agencies are facing. A few years back, we did a survey and we found out that for every 500 instances of cybercrime that take place in India, only 50 tend to get reported in India. And out of 50, only one tends to get registered as an FIR. I think those were conservative figures. The ground reality is far, far more bizarre. We come from a society where being a victim of cybercrime is still looked down upon. We come from a society where uh, victims fear negative media publicity if they go ahead and report and uh, they're actually being stigmatized on the ground of reporting cybercrime. In addition, a lot of people actually believe that they are going to be harassed far more once they report a cybercrime because of the intrinsic inability of the police to deal with uh, cybercrime matters. We're also beginning to see that in our country getting cybercrime case registered is such a tall order. A majority of police officers uh, may not want to register cybercrime because of the intrinsic global nature of this kind of cybercrime. So I basically alerted the bank saying that this is not my usage and I need the money back. And so they said we're okay uh, initiating that inquiry as long as you get a document from the police. And then we went there and they said that uh, okay you need to write a written complaint, we'll give you a complaint number, we'll uh, send it to the cyber cell and then they'll get back to you. And once they get back to you and we know what's happening then you can lodge an FIR. And uh, we realized that the complaint ID that they gave us will suffice as far as the bank is concerned and as far as getting back to us is concerned that really hasn't happened so it hasn't gone to a step where we lodge an FIR. We need to make reporting of cyber crimes extremely easy and in an efficient and a practical manner. We further need to encourage the law enforcement agencies to adopt user-friendly approaches uh, while dealing with the issue of registration and investigations of cyber crimes. The cyber security awareness uh, has to come from school level because now at school level everybody has a cell phone and, and all that stuff, right? So they should be aware that their identity could be stolen, they could be cyber stalked, they, their money can be stolen if they're actually doing banking on them, their private information, private pictures, private videos could be stolen. Imagine this, if you ask a team of 100 people, how many people out of that would be trained on using cyber on, or, or on using the cell phone? Probably 99 of them will say that, whoa, what do you talk about a training? This is something which naturally came to me. Now you're talking about one of the most important aspects of your physic, of your personal and professional life, which is your cell phone. And without absolutely any zero training, you're actually enabling somebody with that. So it's like you're driving a car without a driving license. Maybe you not get hit, but still there is a chance. Because in the future, the way the digitalization is going, there is not a single point, there is no brainer that everyone has to understand little bit of cyber security. Then only we can achieve the convert the digital India to actually a secure digital India which is more important. Now we are being told that even to have a phone connection you have to give other card. You, if you want to do banking you have to give other card. You will have a unique fingerprint, you will have, have a unique retina scan. But then also it can be attacked easily. So by using money and by using a little bit of brain, you can have two other cards also. I do have two.